All right, now I've got my vector type here with work. I've got that placed. Now I got to do it with the other words. But I remember design is about problem solving. And here is my layout sketch. And my problem is if I put the in right there, it's going to make it so my maze doesn't work. And I want my maze to work. So I'm not sold yet on, on just floating it right above, even though that's the most readable solution. Because I might have to really then alter my illustration, and I don't necessarily want to. What would be cool, in retrospect, and if I was getting paid for this job, would be then to design the I and the N into the maze. That would be cool. But some other solutions might be that I put the in inside the, the O of the progress, right? Or if I put it in the mouth or do something else with it. So I'm going to use this opportunity to show you some experiments I did before in Photoshop. And this is using a typeface. I know we can't download typefaces on these computers, but there are typefaces built in that you could always use just to show you what some of the type tools do. And so what I'll do is I'll just use this T in Photoshop. This is the type tool. And you can choose a typeface, right? Like let's say this one. And this was a typeface that'd be very hard to just draw by hand, right? It's very regular. And then I play with different placements and different sizes. And here I placed it in the mouth. And I thought as black and white, yeah, that works pretty well. But it's a different type of, uh, of design. It probably looks, works a little bit better than that. But either way, that becomes really hard to read. So it's a design problem. I wonder if I could do something kind of too clever by half, like squeeze the I and the N smaller in between the kerning of the progress. So there's things, things to play with. Let's see, or I can put the I on this side and the N on this side, but that really hurts the readability. So these are the problems of design, problem solving. And I'm actually, I like the work part so much that I think I'm going to try a solution of putting them together so that in progress is what fits in the bottom. So first I'm going to make a duplicate of the in. Or let's see, I'm actually going to go to my original one. Make a duplicate of that, the original screen grab I brought in. I'm going to shrink it. So it actually says in progress. And I'm going to try to fit all of that on the bottom. So I'm going to select out just this, duplicate it, and then I am going to separate out, work with the kerning. I do not like how much space there is between the O and the G, so I'm going to do a little trick, kind of like the Stranger Things one, where it moves the N and the G together, because G just takes up a lot of space. A type design teacher I had said, you want to picture your letter form submerged in a glass of water, and you want all of your letter forms to displace the same amount of water. <laughs> so it's some letters are just bigger than others, so if you want them to have the same amount of space, you need to 
play with the kerning to kind of trim them up. And you just have to f f feel it out. All right. So I'm going to take that and I'm actually going to really aggressively on this copy just move that and have almost that kind of tiger stripe overlap in the kerning of the O and the G. You guys see that? See what I did there? So we'll see if that works. Play these different games. Uh, in type design, I want to be careful not to do anything like too eye-catching. Like I was thinking of putting the in inside the O or even fitting the in in between the space of the progress. But, and you can do it with a different color, you know, things like that. But then they become distracting to your illustration. You want it to just be supportive. And it's, it's more difficult than you think. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to transform it. Command T. And then, of course, I can use the arc warping. And I'm going to pull it at the bottom, kind of straight down. And then I'm going to pull it from the top. It does terrible things to my O, right? This is why warp is nice. It gives us a center as well. I'm going to pull it from the center. Try to even out that O and not jog to the left or the right too much. Okay, I can hit return. I haven't screwed anything up too much yet. I can hit T and I'm going to scale it down. If I hold down option, it will do it towards the middle. I can also always use my guides and see if it's starting at the same place, ending at the same place. It roughly is. But I can get away with more curve. So if I'm unsure, because I, I don't like distorting it this much, what I can do is actually duplicate it again, move it down, get a sense of centering it again with my guides. So I'm going for symmetry here. So I see it needs to, that O wants to go to the middle, but I really want it between the O and the G to be in the middle. So kind of like that. And now what I'm gonna do is actually increase the size of just the ends. So I have that negative space to fill. So in design, I'm going to fill that by doing this. Just selecting the ends. I'm trying to cut out this white space so it doesn't cover up my E. But I could always do Command X and put it onto a new layer as well. But let's see, where's my background? Okay, now I'm going to hit Command T. And I'm just going to, oh, I've got to hold down Shift. Stretch these up. And to some extent, that works. I don't think that's actually too bad. And that might be a better solution than trying to, to break my maze by putting the in there. And I like how the in can be very separate. Now, I do want to play more with the P and the E. So what I can do is duplicate that. And so it doesn't, it works independently from my S's and my N's. I'm going to Command X and then Command V, which pastes it onto a new layer all by itself.
And then I'm going to duplicate that and start distorting, playing with that. Play with warp. I can tug it up at the edges. And down in the middle. Yeah. And now I have this separate layer, which I can tweak. Again, by playing with the edges. And then tilting it a little bit. So type is actually pretty resilient to all these crazy things we might do to it. It can stay very readable, as long as you're paying attention to kerning and spacing. And I'm always just kind of squinting and judging its readability. All right. So now if I'm happy with that, what do I do? This is going to review how you make a vector of your type. I want to make sure it's lined up. It looks pretty good. Yeah, that works. All right. So what do I do? I turn off everything except for the type layer. And I'm going to turn off my work layer, my vector. I'm going to turn, let's see, that off. And this off. And my spot illustration off. And I'm going to save it as a test JPEG. And in order to do that, I need to save it as a copy. I don't close Photoshop, but I find that test. I open that with Illustrator. So Colin, this is what you're doing with your type. Once you've opened it up in Illustrator, you use the large selection tool, click on it, it will highlight the full rectangle of your raster. Then you click on Properties. Then you click on Image Trace. Then you click on Black and White Logo. Because even if you already have the Image Trace window open, uh, you need to tell it what you want it to trace. Then you can zoom in, see the preview for how it's doing. You can decide if you want to thicken it or thin it out. I might try letting it be a little bit thicker. Yeah, I actually, that looks pretty good. And then when you're happy with it, make sure you hit ignore white so it doesn't select the white shapes and then hit expand. And actually nicer than the work one this came through without a lot of variations in how bumpy it is. Maybe because I didn't ever put an outline stroke on it, you know, to thicken it up. Okay, so now I save that as an EPS file to my computer, to my desktop. And I'm going to rename it the actual text. So this is going to be my in-progress EPS. I don't even really need to save the Illustrator file. So I have this one, now I have this one, but as long as I have the EPS saved, I have work and I have in progress as EPSs and I've got my finished black type. So then I come back to my poster and I drag and drop that vector EPS text in 
It will come in at the 